Here's my second new shirt from my cousin Allison. She got them for me for my birthday. Witchy Taylor Swift attire. Thank you very much. My next book is going to have Taylor Swift references, just like Swing did. When I was living the story that was Swing, this was nine years ago, and reputation, no, 1989, the original album, okay, not Taylor's version, the original 1989 had come out, and I just discovered Taylor Swift. Okay, and in the new book, Split, A Memoir in Pieces, there will be some other Taylor references, and witchy references, lots of, there, there's a whole section on the book that is all about me casting for men, because that was, sometimes I believe in magic and astrology and witchy stuff, and sometimes I don't. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. But in the dating, my magic worked fast. I was supposed to be imagining who I wanted to play me in a series adaptation of Swing, and I could not imagine anybody. But I was newly single, and interested in getting back out there a little bit. So I started imagining the kind of man I would like to date one at a time. The man in that moment that I thought I want to date. Okay. And I actually cast for love to find me by the summer solstice and for sex to find me in 72 hours. And it did, but I didn't realize I had to cast for good sex because that was the worst slash attempted sex I've ever had in my life. And in that moment, I realized why I had so many followers on social media. Because a lot of you are having sex. That's not good. And I didn't realize. And now I know. Ugh. I was under the assumption that every man who was of the age to interact with an adult woman in an intimate manner physically would have an idea about how to at least touch a vulva. But they do not. They do not. This first experience, my first experience out of the gate, um, was not good. Um, and I've had a similar technique attempted since then. And the best way to describe it is it's like the claw hand on Scary Movie. Do you remember that movie? Stir in the mashed potatoes. They put the hand on the and they're neither in nor out, but they kind of move it around a little bit in this clawed manner. And they say, I want you to come. Yet they, they, they have nothing to offer toward that end. Jesus. Someone just messaged me and said, could you expand? Why, why isn't that a good technique? Okay, my loves, you go in. You go all the way in, okay? Up to the nut, you go in. All right, well, you could start with one if you want, whatever. You go in, all right, and you, 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 I like the hook, you can go back. By the way, this is the front of the vagina, and this is the back of the vagina, okay? So when you go, if you go in like this towards someone and go like this towards their belly button, that's the front of their vagina. By the way, um, I had a fight with wine guy about that. He's like, that's the back. I was like, well, if, if you know anatomy, actually, that's the front of the body. So it's the front, and he, anyway. He was also an actor who didn't know what stage left meant. But anyway. Okay, so if you're going into a vagina, you go into it. Into it. I recommend when you come out, you come out carefully, because for me, underneath my clitoris is sensitive. So if someone comes out like this, I'm like, hey! Access denied. You have to touch it right. In, with the fingers moving around, okay. Or you could have a flat palm. See the difference between the flat palm and the claw? A flat palm on top. Probably up a little higher than you think because you don't want to get underneath the clip and like catch it. On top, like this. You could even do it over pants. Flat palm, like this. Pushing down on the pubic bone. The most, the majority of the clitoris is under the skin, okay? So pushing like that. A lot of, um, a lot of women, that's how they first climax on their own. It's rubbing up against something. Does that clear some things up? This is neither in nor out. This is missing the outside of the clitoris and scratching 
the inside of the vagina. Abrasive and irritating. I'm like, just, I'll just go get my toys. I'll just go get my toys. Um, but the, the thing that really, really went wrong on that first, that first date, the first, the first hookup out of the gate was I did not clarify beforehand if the man was interested in eating pussy. I just thought every man loves to eat pussy because like, I just thought like that is their favorite thing in the world to do. No, not this gentleman, not this guy. On first hookup with anyone, I like to do this move and I hadn't done this move for 21 years. It's like my hawk tua, okay? Once a man <laughs> inserts his fingers and does a good job there, I will take his hand and put it in his mouth. <laughs> it's my move. It's not original. I, like, I'm sure many of you do this move, okay? I mean, it's not, I, I, I didn't consult with anybody else before I did it, but I'm sure that other people do it. I'm not saying that I invented it by any means. I'm just saying I always do it, and it's always a home run. Home run! Until this guy, I do it, I bring my fingers to his mouth, and he turns his head so fast that I almost get shoulder checked by his, with his, his shoulder, and then he sticks the fingers in my mouth. And I was like, oh shit, this isn't gonna go, this isn't gonna go the way I thought it was gonna go. The only reason I really wanted to hook up with another human is because I wanted that to happen. Other things I can simulate on my own, but I was like, oh, something I miss, it's that. Oh goodness. So then I had a choice. Do I entertain this young gentleman? Because he was young. He was young. And I mean, like there's, there are more details in the book. I think he was probably a gay bottom. He was a twink, okay? A twink who would not go down on me. Shocker. After I told my gay friend Matt the news, he said, um, I could kind of tell by his eyebrows, but I didn't want to say anything because you were excited about the date. I said, thanks for being a good friend, I guess. So I added that to my list of pre-screening questions. What do you think of oral? Giving and receiving. I want to hear about both. Whew. So yeah, you live, you learn. And... Um, Sometimes you give in an embarrassingly long um, slash to a twink you would like to get out of your house. It was the most humiliating. Like, I don't even know how long it took. It, took, it, it was just... But I wanted to be a good host. And also, you don't have to do that. And also, I was like, I'll just take one for humanity here and just try to and then the next day I messaged the young gentleman and I said don't ever do that to a woman again you cannot expect to interact with a woman without being reciprocal and he apologized as he should have I did not say to him and dude I just think you're gay it's okay just be gay but I did really feel like he does this thing quarterly where he has sex with a housewife to see if he's straight. That's what it felt like. It felt like I was the quarterly housewife. How do you try to have sex with <laughs> Yeah, so one of the parts of my book is um, all about the different Philly archetype men I met while dating, okay? Uh, that's a fun one. There were mainline Jewish boys, more than one. I dated a few Jewish guys because Jewish skating dads always seemed like so invested in their families. I was like, they're nice. Um, there was a Delco blue collar contractor. Okay, Delco blue collar, of course. You got to date that guy. Um, there was a young Philly lawyer who was black. 
I mean, iconic. And do you know what he said to his trainer about me after we hooked up? He said, I really could get used to that John, J-A-W-N. It's a Philly term that means everything and nothing all at once. And I didn't take offense. I actually was like, he, he meant it in a complimentary way. And I was like, look at me. Two decades in the Philly area. Finally be call, finally called a John. I mean, I didn't know it was a goal, but I was like, wow, I've assimilated. 